Welcome back to the channel. My name's Inside A Gamer. Welcome to X Pain 11, and welcome to the new Just Flights BAE 146 Professional. Now, in this series, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a very quick tutorial guide for you guys. Very simple guide. We're following checklists for all features of this aircraft, from uh, startup procedures, from dark and cold, the FMCs, uh, taxi, takeoff, climb, descent, and ILS approach. Now there are a few ways you can fly this aircraft, I will be using the FMC on board, uh, if anyone would like me to do a tutorial on how to do it through the other way, through the radio navigations, let me know, I'll make a separate tutorial, it's a little bit more complex. This aircraft itself though is really good, I've flown it a few times on stream now, as you can see it's in the Highland Connect which is part of my VA on the channel, simply connectva.com as you can see there on the fuselage. Um, but yeah, textual wise and outside this aircraft is brilliant, it's been really nice to fly, it handles really well, even in the stormy weather that we had yesterday I had a really rough takeoff and landing but it all handled itself really really well. Um, really impressed with this so far and it's really exciting to have this as part of the VA and part of the aircraft hangar here on the channel. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to be doing a very short flight from Gatwick to Manchester as my usual tutorials go. Um, now, for any of you guys that don't know how to automatically put the FMS file into uh, x -Pane, so what we're going to do, we're just going to bring up SimBrief. Um, so all I've made is a very simple plan. As you can see, I haven't even put in the airliner or the flight number, but the B463 is the aircraft that you need. EGKK to EGCC. Uh, we're going to be cruising at flight level 220. Um, air time is about 43 minutes. It, block fuel is very heavy actually. This is a, a lot of fuel. I need to change my uh, limits here on uh, Simbrief, but that is the block fuel. Zero fuel weight of 344 and tow weight of 409. We will be taking the LAM 6 departure and arrival of day N2A. Now for the purpose of the tutorial, I have weather turned off. We just have a nice clear day so we can see everything. As you can see, there's the flight plan itself. So for any of you that don't know, all you do is download the FMS and go across and just drag it into your whatever your X plane is output FMS plans just throw that in here uh, and that is the easy way to do this now if you want to do it you could type it in yourself it's not particularly hard it does use the default FMC okay so I'm just gonna get rid of them again let's get into the flight deck let's have a little look around the aircraft first of all so if we go up above we're gonna see most of your main light switches are up here and air conditioning over here you kind of got your anti-skid spoilers your master avionics here you've got your hydraulics. All your fuel stuff is in this area. Electric area is in here. APU and engine start, ice protection is all here. Got your pressurization of the cabin. Ice protection. And then we got all the airs, engine air, ram airs and stuff as well. If you want to turn up the lights on any of the panels, this is where you'll do that. Uh, it's not going to do anything right now because obviously we've got no battery going to the aircraft. Uh, you've got your fasten seat belts, wipers, Lights, which I'm going to explain, is down for taxi, up for landing, okay? Uh, runway lights, emergency deck lights. That's pretty much that area. Okay, in here, if we just get rid of this for a second. If you click on this square, it's going to bring you up its tablet, which we're going to talk about. It does flick between the two, so you've got your AVI tab, and you've got what we need to uh, get all the fuel and stuff on board. Panel lights are down here. Again, if you want to turn up any of your lights once the batteries are on, it's all down here. Talking about this area for a second, um, we're going to go into a bit more detail, but it's very basic uh, glass analog kind of screens here. Um, you know, you got your speed indicator, your out, all that kind of stuff. If you're going to use your FMCs, this is what we're going to be looking for. Um, brake temperatures and stuff, all well and good. Here you kind of got your engines, your fuel, and you're going to see all your fuel used and stuff up here. Uh, we're going to talk about all this stuff in a little bit more detail, but this is where you do most of your autopilot stuff. You've got your gear handling. Uh, you got all this stuff over here as well, which is just replicating what's over there. Over in this corner, you've got the uh, data recorder. So if you want to put today's date in here, it, it's not a necessity, but say if you want to put a bit more realism into your checklist, this is where you do that. I won't be doing that today, um, but that's where you do that over here on the co-pilot side. Down below here then, if we just move up the armrest, as it's going to be in the way a little bit, uh, you got your brake temperatures here, this is all your kind of squawking codes, radio navigations, this is all your kind of, you know, your pitches, your rudder trims, etc, your FMC, so yeah, so look, there's a basic kind of go around of the cockpit, 
Um, I haven't really talked about much in detail because I have to go through them through the checklist. So we'll talk about more of the individual stuff, what we're looking for as we kind of go around. Okay, so we will be doing a full checklist it. Um, so I'm going to split this video into two parts. This first part is quite a long procedure of the checklist from startup, cold to taxi. So we're going to make that one video. The second video will be then takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, ILS landing. Okay, so we will be doing an ILS landing in this. So both videos will probably be about 40 minutes to 30 minutes, depending. Um, on the second one, I will cut things out. Once I've showed you procedures, I will cut between the areas just to speed it up a little bit. Now, I'd just like to point out I'm not a real-world pilot, so some procedures might be wrong. I am following the checklist that they have given within the aircraft. So if things are a little bit wrong, you know, don't bite at me. But I will do my best to try and explain everything the best I can. If you have any other questions, do feel free to come join the Discord. Um, and we'll be able to try and help you there if you do have any questions. It is a fantastic aircraft. It's a bit of a complex machine to get your head around. Um, but once you kind of do, it is a real good machine. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to start with the FMC. So if you want to bring out your GPU, now it doesn't need GPU power to start, so we're not going to bother with that today. No, nothing actually shows on the outside. But if we go forward packs and stairs, uh, that will release the stairs here. You've got all your cargoes if you want to open them up. You're going to bring in your rear packs, and like so. If we just go on the outside, you can see all the animations. It's really cool how the stairs will open up and stuff. All the doors have opened. I've opened all the doors just so you can see the animations of the aircraft. So all the doors are open, as you can see there. Now, this aircraft does come in quite a few variants. It does come in a cargo variant. It's got the 100, the 200, and the 300. This is the 300. There you go. All the doors are open. You've got the little cargo doors underneath as well. Uh, so, yeah, quite detailed. Really nice. Anyways, for this flight, okay, so we know that the fuel needs to be 707. So, what are going to do? We're just going to fill up the wings. Try and level them out. Uh, what have we got here so far? 6 8. Hey, when the aircraft moves around. Okay, so look, there's more than enough fuel. Well, too much fuel now, but uh, you know what? We'll take a little bit out because it's a bit too much. There we go. 7 1. That'll do us. Okay, so that's fine. Fuel on board is done. So 3 4 4 is our desired gross weight. Uh, a zero fuel weight, sorry. So we are a bit low here. So we've only got 23 passengers. So we're going to fill this up. Uh, this can take about 100 passengers, this aircraft. And it should bring us close to that 3-4, um, what we're looking for. Okay, say we have, you know, 90 passengers. And let's add a little bit of cargo. As you can see, the aircraft's moving around as we do this. Again, just trying to keep it balanced. It does help for your takeoffs and stuff. Um... Still just shy, not me. Probably get about 500 kilos each, nearly. Okay, so we're very close to that. That That's fine for me. Uh, gross weight of 409, so we're just under that. that. That's fine. So there we go. That's how you uh, set your fuel and weights, your passengers. Now, it does have some call-outs, but they're very quiet. I haven't worked out how to turn them up. There must be a volume or something coming to this eventually, but... As you can hear them, and you have to reset them so you can go through the kind of order there if you wish. But there you go, there is all your weights and fuel. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shut all these doors so they're kind of ready to be shut for us. There we go. Now, we're going to go into the full checklist itself. So, first thing is flight deck safety. So, gear level is down, radar off, radar is off, transponder is on standby. And uh, as you can see, it's on standby down here, as you can see the transponder. Uh, air brake is in, air brake is in. Flaps are up, flaps are currently sitting in the up position. Navigational lights can now go on. So if we go up above, so the first thing you need to do is these nav lights here. So high intensity, okay, that's what we're going for here. Batteries on and checked. So we're going to go down to the batteries now, battery one and battery two. And you can check them by moving this around. You can see uh, battery one, you can see the volts here. And uh, battery two, they're stabilized, so we know that the voltage in the battery is good. Gear down three greens now that the light is uh, come on. 
we're just going to clear this master caution for a second. Uh, three green, of course, because the uh, the gears are well, hopefully they're down. Uh, brake, yellow, and park. As you can see, yellow and park. Here we go. That's pulled up here on the parking brake. Okay, so now we can go back up above to the master switches. So we're going to stay up here for a second. Sorry, an aircraft is landing behind us. Okay, so this is the main uh, master switches. So AP master switch can go on. Your dampeners can go on. Avionics A, Avionics B can now go on as well. Buster ties, we want to put them down to automatic. So as you can see, the buster tire is down here, so we can flick them up. Standby generator can be armed, as you can see here. Gens 1 to 4 off as indicated, they're currently offline, 1 to 4 generators are still offline. APU generator can now go on. So the APU generator can go on and the galley can go on there as well. Fire handles are all in, yes the fire handles are all in. I do apologise for that uh, aircraft behind us, um, I should have probably turned off the traffic. Okay, ground tests are now complete. AC on if required, so if you wanted your ground AC on at this point you could turn on your packs. Uh, so the cabin can have start having some air if you wished. And APU could now go on here as well, so we'd start the APU, um, but your left inner fuel pump has to go on. So left inner fuel pump, and as you can see here now, uh, the APU is now kicking in. MWS is tested to normal. Again, we're just going to clear that. MWS, uh, we can now turn on. As you see, the power is down here. I'm just getting a bit of a closer look for you guys. So we've tested that to power. So V reference would be plus uh, plus 25 for takeoff. That's what we're going to be used. So V reference, um, and we're going to look at this in a second. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, announce it is test. That's fine. You can do all the testing. So there's a lot of tests you can actually do. You know, you can flick all these. Um, if you go up above to the upstairs panel, there's lots of other tests like stall warning. Uh, so if you want to go really in depth, you can do full testing here. Uh, but we're not going to do that for the second. But there it is there if you want to do it. Cabin emergency lights can now be armed. If we go back to the above panel, flight deck emergency lights are here. We're not doing them ones, it's the ones that is up here. Cabin emergency lights can now be armed. They are now armed. Go back below and we're going to just cut that off there. Air conditioning is required, we've turned it on, you can hear it. Uh, DC pump, you could test if you wish, but it, it, you know, it, it's on. You can see that it's on, you're getting some hydraulic pressures at the moment. Um, so that is good. Okay, so next step would be AC pump and PTU on and check. So PTU here, we put the AC pump on to auto. Uh, we can leave that now in auto. And you can see here, the hydraulic pressures have all started changing, uh, which is good. They're uh, checked. Thrust levers configured to check. Yep, they're in the uh, off position at the moment. AC pump, PTU on. Uh, continue ignition off. Continuous ignition is here. It is in the off position, so that is good. Heaters can be off. Wing tail ice protection is off, so all of this is actually currently still off. Flight deck emergency lights we can now arm, we we'll arm them. Control disc handles in, yep the handles are in. Your dampeners are on, we've already turned on the your dampeners. Now the only other thing with your dampeners, you do need to turn them on down here as well. Okay, one and two on this little box here. Autopilot is off, okay, AP is currently off. Now what I want to talk about quickly uh, is this cool feature down here. So if you want to put in your whatever your flight reference might be, you click on the ATC FD. Um, so we'll we'll go for simply connect. So S, we press enter. Uh, then you go to C, enter, and say that we're zero two, which is my pilot number. Enter, enter. Okay, that would now be our flight inputted into there. So if we go backwards and forwards, it'll stay there. And then if you're squawking. Uh, you just type in whatever your squawk you might get from your ATC. You don't have to press enter on that one. You just type it in and then it will just stay. And we'll change that now to TA, okay, as we're on the ground, okay, so for traffic on the ground. We're going to put it on the brake temperature server. So this is a cool feature. You can actually check all the temperatures of the brakes, uh, which is really, really nice. And this also moves. Uh, so when you're we've secured for takeoff, we can move that across. 
Uh, so we'll just put it in. And then if you want some console lights, here they are down here. This this will turn on some lighting, as you will be able to see in a second. There we go. So that that is the kind of first part of the flight deck safety. Uh, that is all set up for us now. So before start, we'll continue down for our checklist. Safety exterior checks are complete, yes. Um, yellow, park, press and temp, we just turned that on. That's fine. Thrust levels, fuel is off. Hydraulics are all off. Fuel panel is checked and set. Okay, so we can check our fuel here. We can see that we have enough fuel for nothing in the center tank. Uh, yet yeah, there is enough fuel. These are all zeroed, um, which is good. Okay, so we're now going to go to pressurization. So the pressurization is this little thing here. So what we actually need to do is change the rate. And you'll see that by moving this across. So if we're at flight level 10,000, so we've been cleared to 22,000. So we need it over here. Okay, so that's 20,000, 21, 22. Okay, I'm going to pressure it to 23 because I had an issue of a blackout. Um, so 23,000, that is set. It's on to automatic. Uh, the valves are currently shut, but you'll see them open up um, as we kind of get ready for taxi and stuff. But there we go. So that is pressurization set for you guys if you are looking for that. Uh, ice detect on. Okay, so you could throw on your ice detects here if you wish. So ice protections can all go on. And as you can see it here, it's already in your on position, but there you go. Lights and notices set. Uh, we've already set all our notices and lights. Uh, what we could do here as well is put on your fasten seatbelt signs. Uh, and your no smoking, which was already on automatic, but we can flick it on if you wish. Okay, and your entry lights if you wanted them on. But we're already boarded. Air conditioning checked and set. Again, air conditioning is here. Um, you know, we could have it pretty cool. Wh whatever temperature you want, you know, it's just a cool little feature. Not important. Fast seatbelts are done. Flow meters are zeroed. We've already done that. Fuel contents have checked. Flight data recorder, which I've showed you, which is over here. If you want to set the date on the flight data recorder, uh, that's where you would do that, okay? Also, at this point, we'll go down below. We do need to turn on our... Radio panels, there we go. Radio panels are on. And the same for the one up above here. We'll turn it to standby and turn it on, okay? So that is that set and done. Ultimate, uh, so depending on what your alt is here, uh, 10948 is what they've given us here. So that is fine for us to start with. Uh, 2992. Okay, so this is wrong. 2992 because I have weather turned off currently. So 2992, in case we're going to change that, because like I said, uh, we have weather turned off for the purpose of the tutorial. Okay, 2992 is in here. Okay, so they are set and checked. Navades area set, okay. Uh, briefing done. MWS, ground operations reset. TMS, M1 speeds calculated. Okay, so the really cool feature of this, if we go over to our TMS now, we're going to go to takeoff. It's giving us a 92.2 and a reference of plus 25 degrees, okay? So it flaps 18, this is 41,000 kilograms, which is what we weigh. V1 is 134, V2, 138. If we want to do a 24 flaps, it would be a 124. Okay, so where do you click? There you go, so I clicked on the second line. So we're going to do a flaps 24 because we're quite heavy. Uh, we don't really need to, we, we do just do a flaps 18. But say if you want a flaps 30, uh, whichever one you pick, it changes your speed bugs here already. So this is your rotational speed, your flaps are in, etc. at speeds, okay? And that actually changes for both of them. So you can see now our speeds are automatically, and when we want to do our landing, we click on the bottom half of this. Perfect, okay? Another aircraft next to us taking off, of course. Plenty of aircraft here today in Gatwick. Okay, you can turn on your radar here. Um, I'm not sure it's actually operational at the moment, but we'll just turn it on for the sake of the tutorial. And now we're going to go to the FMC. Now, the FMC is, at the moment, is the bare basics X-Plane 11 default, okay? That's why I'm not going to show you how to input it. By now, most of you guys should know how to work this FMC if you wish to use it. Um, so what we're going to go is go straight into root menu, company list, and you can see the one that we put in earlier, EGKK to EGCC. We're going to load that in. Uh, at this point, you can put in your flight number. Uh, so, what was it? Simply Connect, wasn't it? So, SC02, which was my pilot number. We're just going to put that in there for now. That is fine. Um, and we can execute that. The only thing you need to do is go into your departure arrival. So, we're going to departure. We know that we're taking the uh, LAN 6M. 
as usual from this point. Uh, so lamp 6M, and then we need to go back up so we can see our runways. We've taken off on runway 26 left according to Simbrief, and we'd execute that into the flight plan. Okay. So if we go into the legs, we should see it now come in for lamp. If we go through that, there's no there's no deviations or any discontinuities at the moment. Uh, we know that Lam, Wheeling and Kapu uh, are the waypoints as what Simbrief has told us. Okay, so we go back into departure arrival. Obviously, you wouldn't normally do your arrival if you're using ATC or VATSIM, etc. until you get it, but we know what we're getting. Um, so we're going to be taking the day N2A. So the day N2A, which is here, which also means that we'll be probably be taking ILS 23 left. So we're looking for an ILS 23 left if we can. Uh, no ILS into 2-3. Okay, so the other one that I know that's close by is 5 right, I believe. So if we go to ILS 5 right, that's what we'll take. And we'll take the MCT1 transition, okay? And we'll execute that. That has now become active. We go into the legs now. We just need to make sure there's no discontinuities, which we have. So we've got the MCT, which is kind of direct. And... Uh, And we're going to throw that into there and execute that. So that now gets rid of that discontinuity. Now, we have no map or anything to actually see our flight plan. So we're just going by the waypoints that are on Simbrief. Um, we'll be able to check it out once we're up in the air as well. You'll, you'll know if you're going wrong. But you can see here, flight level 220. Okay, so what you want to do is go into your climb. Transitional altitude is only 5,000 because we're in the UK. Uh, we're going to be speeds of 250 up to flight level 10,000, which is correct. We go to the next page. Cruising altitude today is 22,000, so the 220. We'll throw that in. Target speed then will be 300, okay? That is fine. That is the FMC done. There's not much else we can do with that as it stands, to be honest with you. Now, of course, if you are using ATC at this point, they would have given you your clearance. And um, so for us, we're just going to go straight up in the basis of this tutorial. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's do it properly. So let's go into Navigraph. Let's go into our airports. EGKK, as we're in Gatwick. Okay, we're going to bring up this chart. So we're looking for our departure of. We are the LAM 6M. The LAM 6M. There we go. And we know. As we depart, we cannot go over 220 knots and the flight level of 4,000 until Acorn, which we'll be allowed to go up to down to 5,000 until Lamb, up to 6,000. So, you know, we are cleared a little bit of the way. So what we'll do for the first waypoint then is uh, we might as well, we'll be around there pretty quickly. So we might as well just put 5,000, okay? So we're going to put this straight in. I love this little feature. If you need to get it a bit closer, you can just use the mouse wheel uh, for 5,000 feet. You need to press arm. If you do not press this, nothing is going to happen. Okay, so that is our first clearance, okay? Now, the other way we could look at this is by the numbers for the waypoints. We know that the, the heading will be 079, uh, and the first waypoint is 117.3. So if you're doing it the old fashioned way, you'd be using this. So 111.73, uh, was it? 117.3. Point three zero, okay, and then you put that into your navigation. So if you were not using the FMS, you can see that this is now trying to come alive. Um, we would be trying to track that that waypoint. Then we'll be then going up to one one five point six from there, uh, heading of three three seven. But again, we're going to be using the FMC. Like I said, if anyone wants a tutorial on that stuff, we can do that separately. Okay, the next thing here for us is we need to change this into RNAV because we are using the FMC's uh, flight, okay? It's route. So RNAV has to go into both. Again, if you're going to do this, this is the co-pilot's one. You'd make sure that this is also heading the same, okay? But we will be using this for ILS and we'll be talking about that a little bit as we get up. Uh, very quickly here, this is when you turn on your AP. You have to turn it on in both places uh, if you're using your heading. LNAV is what we would use for the flight pan. And for, for the climb, you can use vertical speed or you can use IAS. I use IAS. It's up to you. I just prefer using that. 
Um, it does. There's no right or wrong way on how to fly this. If you are doing it from the waypoints itself, you'll just use a VNAV, okay? And that will then be giving you your radio frequency navigation, okay? But we're doing LNAV. So don't forget that. Also, the thing to remember here at this point, 92.2, .2, we need to change these to our engines for the TMS, for the auto throttle. It does have takeoff auto throttles. Um, so we need to make sure all four engines say you'd round up to so 92.2. .2, you may as well just go to 93. Okay. Always round up. 93, and unfortunately, you have to for all four engines. Okay, 93 has now been set. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here. We're now actually ready for the pushback and engine kind of start procedures. Um, we know what we're doing as we exit out. Okay, so we will be making a right turn. Now we can fly that ourselves. It is up to you. So once you kind of get up to 1,500 feet, start taking a right turn to heading 079 if you want to. Um, it, it, is, it is up to you, okay? Put that in there, or even change our heading bug. Uh, 079. You can see the bug changing here. Um, if you wanted to do it that way. But you know once you start making that right turn, okay, you know you're on the right track. So 079. Just going to move that bug around, just so you have something to track and follow if you wished. Okay. There we go. As you can see, it's already got a little dot there. So that's all fine. That's all well and good. FMC set up. Okay, let's ask for pushback here then, guys. Okay, we've got a nice pushback. Round to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Okay. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. We need to now go back above here. So starting checklist, APU generator external AC set. Um, that is all set, it's all set down here. That is all fine, okay. APU generator is on the on. You can now hear it in the background. Beacon can now go on because we're gonna do some stuff, turn on the engine so the ground crew know. Packs and APU air off. So if you are using air conditioning, it will have to go off for starting as we're starting on the APU. Uh, engine anti-ice would now go on. Engine anti-ice is all here. They will now all go on. AC pumps would now go on. So aircraft pumps, uh, all the fuel pumps, here we go, all on. And okay. AC pumps up here, on. You can see it now changing up here. Fuel pumps are on, checked. Start power is to normal, so start power is here you can see it's in the normal position uh, start master would now be going on continuing ignition for a and b and flight start would also go on so all it would be now is we'd be going through the engines and turning on okay so it's very very simple we're waiting for clearance to actually turn on the engines and stuff we're just waiting for him on the outside here he is he is getting there Okay, parking brake is released. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Okay, so I've moved engine to number four. All we're gonna do here now is start run. So you're gonna watch the N2 rise here. So once it kind of gets to the 10 point, we need to flick the switch here and we just drag this up to its first notch. It'll go up by itself pretty much. Okay, and you're gonna see that engine four is now engaged and is starting. You probably would wait until it's kind of settled before you do three, but for the purpose of the tutorial, three, engine start and again we're just going to wait for the n2 to rise you can see it rising there flick the fuel switch here boom okay we can now see that engine three is turning over and doing whatever it needs to do back up above we'll now go to engine two we'll start engine two uh, you can see that the n2 is rising engine two is started and then we'll go down into engine number one 
start that again and we're watching the N2 rise once it's rising to that 10 point fuel on and into the engine that's simple for engine engine startup is probably the easiest part of this <laughs> So you can see all the engines uh, turned over. They're all gonna just kind of get. We can check here. You can see that they're all stabilizing. Number one's just finishing its startup procedure here now. Um, so that's all looking nice. Better pushback probably should be finished now as well. That's all we're waiting for here. So I do apologize. It is quite a long video. It is quite extensive. Uh, this complete. aircraft. Set parking brake. Okay, parking brake is set. Disconnecting toes. Stand by. Okay, so we can now do the after start checklist here. So, start power back to normal. It stays in the normal position anyways. It, it hasn't really changed. Start select and masters are now off. Okay, so start select and master can now go off because the engine have all been started. Engine anti-ice as required. Um, we're going to turn anti-ice off because it is a nice day. There is no weather at the moment, so we don't have to worry about anti-ice as it currently stands. Generators for engines 1 to 4 can now go online. So the generators will now go online. Brake fans auto. So brake fans up here. We can switch that now to automatic. Hydraulics on and checked. Uh, hydraulics are all on. Engine pumps on. You can, we can just go check there. We've got plenty of PSI. Um, it's looking... It's looking okay. So is disconnected. A bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Okay, heat is, is already on automatic. Um, cabin fans, it's already pretty warm. So that's fine. APU and engine air. So if you wanted to put on APU, so if you want to put on APU air on here at this point, you can, and all your engine airs can also uh, be turned on at this stage. Um, packs 1 and 2 could go back online if you wish, um, as required. So cabin temperatures, yeah, that's all well and good. TMS, as required, is already checked. Doors are closed. Ground equipment removed. Transponder, as required. That is pretty much the full start procedure. APU stays on this aircraft until after the takeoff, okay? And that is according to its checklist. Uh, we could now go to engine generators. We could check that the generators are working. You see that there's power. There's battery power there as well. And again, engine continuous is going to stay out until the takeoff point as well. Okay, so for taxi, landing lights are down. As you can see here, landing lights are now both down. And that's all we kind of need now for our taxi. We are good to uh, taxi down to runway 26 left. So you're just going to take off the park brake. We're going to up the throttles a little bit. She's going to shake. Now, do be careful to put too much throttle on. If you throttle up too high, the TMS will take over and then they will try and uh, take off. So you don't want that. But just keep an eye on the engines. You know, once they get going, we will get moving pretty quickly and it is pretty rapid. So don't forget that. Moving across now for our taxi. Obviously, you would have had all your clearances from ATCs and stuff. Obviously, for the tutorial, we are not using ATC. We also can put our first notch of slaps and flaps on, uh, 18, depending on which one you are doing here. But we'll do 18, actually. We won't do for 24. It's a long runway. So 134 is our rotational speeds. You do get a call out, which is quite nice, um, from its own kind of co-pilot person. And of course we have a very short taxi, which is nice. We'd hold short here now. And uh, we would then get our final clearances for takeoff if required, depending on how you play your game. And we'll do our before take takeoff checklist. So brakes, yellow and green checked. Okay, uh, brake fans, everything's good. You know, it's all pretty, pretty nice at the moment, uh, which is good. Flaps selected. Okay, we just put in our flaps to 18. Uh, so that is checked. Flight instruments checked. All flight instruments are working correctly as they should. Flight directors will now come alive. You can see the flight director is now alive. 
um, which is nice. Trim set and checked. Okay, so you check your trim. Uh, we probably could move that just a little bit. We'll just bring that into the, the green area a bit more. There we go, three degrees. Uh, that is fine. Configurations checked. Navigation A's and transponders set. They're all set. Transponder is set. We'll now move to TA, TRA because we are going to take off and air traffic. Uh, again, continuous ignition A, B as required. We can leave them on still. Cabin is secure. Radar as required. AC pump would be on. Uh, we'll just make sure that the AC pump is on. AC pump is on automatic for us, so it's fine. It is on. Uh, lights and strobes would now go on, of course. Uh, so strobe lights would now go on. Uh, if you wanted any wing lights, logo lights, all up here as well, depending on what is required. Don't need them during the day, but like I said, as required. TMS is set, controls are checked, MWS is checked. Okay, so we're pretty much good now to get our clearances and uh, look at takeoff. So that's it, guys. I'm going to leave it here for this first episode. Uh, we're good to go for takeoff. If you are enjoying this content, please do subscribe down below to the channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications. I do upload every single day. Uh, if you want a more extensive checklist and stuff, you know, come join Discord. Uh, if you want to come join the VA, simply connect VA.com. Link in the description down below is the virtual airlines that I have built for the channel. Uh, you are all more than welcome. Hopefully, I'll see you for part two, which we'll be talking about everything else. So takeoff, climb, descent, and ILS landing into Manchester. And that for myself, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you at the next one. Bye for now.